Hey everybody, Radamon here. Thanks for tuning in to the first episode of Automation Empire. Automation Empire is a game where you manage a massive industrial network of factories, mines, farms, trains, trucks, and robotic drones in the name of automation and efficiency. So let's get started. I'm going to start on coastline, a beautiful idyllic coastline. In this series, I'm going to be going over all of the fundamental gameplay mechanics so that if you are looking to learn Automation Empire, uh, this is the right series for you. So let's get started. I'm going to pause right as we start here. I, I can leave it unpaused. So when you start off, you have a very basic mining rig, which is mining up coal ore. It transfers the coal ore through a transfer tube to a crate maker. Crate maker boxes up, and then drones take those boxes puts them on a, um, on a truck, and then that truck, once full, will go to the road exit, and you'll make money, and you'll export resources. The goal of this game here, believe it or not, is to export, uh, well, in this one, it is for a gold medallion, or master's seller's medallion. It is to export 35,000 kilograms in a three-month span. Generally speaking, it will be to export a certain amount over a uh, over a certain time span. Um, so what we have to do is we have to increase the efficiency of our exportation. So first thing to look at here is the kilogram weights of material. Right now we are generating coal ore, and coal ore only weighs one kilogram. It is unprocessed coal ore, and it does not weigh very much. If we processed it, it would weigh 10 kilograms, so it would count 10 times higher for the amount that we're trying to export. Um, for us to be able to refine it, we have to unlock the refinery, which requires research. And I'll go over that soon. So you start off with a drone bay, which supports up to down here four drones. We have one out of four. A power station, which can power up a lot more uh, things than we currently have in our network. So the first thing I want to do is to increase the efficiency of this setup. So I'm going to have this transfer tube transfer to a small container that transfers to a crate maker that transfers to an unload station. Just like before, but I'm adding a container in there. This container will help to store excess material that I'll want to sell. Now the next thing I, I want to do is this crate maker can handle uh, material one per three seconds, but this mining rig only generates one per 10 seconds. So the obvious solution here is to mine additional coal for exportation. Additionally, one of the other bottlenecks is the amount of drones that I have to haul crates to the truck. With one drone, I have to make six trips. With uh, three drones, I have to make two trips each. All right, so for us to go ahead and add some additional mining rigs, there is things that we need to think about. Um, there, It is not very efficient to add in crate makers for each of these mining rigs because a crate maker costs 1200 per month to run and this crate maker is being used at less than a third uh, capacity. So what we're gonna do is we're going to mine up the ore over here and transfer it to this container here and then the container will then send it to the crate maker. So the way to do this is with minecarts. So if you hook up a transfer tube that looks like this, this type of transfer tube takes the material of the mining rig and puts it into a minecart or step conveyor. So if I lay down three tracks like that, each of the uh, each of these types of transfer tubes require about a, a three track run straight section in order to operate. You can't transfer tube on a uh, curved section. And then additionally, I'm going to want to do the same thing over here. But the reason I haven't put this mining rig in yet is um, mining rigs cost money per month to run, and until I'm going to use it, until I have a closed loop. I don't really want to pay to have a powered up mining rig that doesn't do anything. So 
I'm just going to leave it empty for the moment. And then this type of transfer tube then pulls material from your minecart and puts it into the container. So if we add a three uh, long section run there, uh, this is what one mine track will have to connect to. So let's connect this up. This is not so hard to connect up. I like to, it doesn't, the game does not require you to build in loops, but I like to build in loops just because it's cleaner and trains run more efficiently on it. So there we go. We have a very simple loop, which will take material from these mining rigs and I'll build the other mining rig now. Now, one way to build the mining rig is to go into the mining extraction um, submenu or just to mouse over your mining rig, hit spacebar, and that just copies. And then I'm going to move this telephone pole more to the center and add two minecarts to this network. So now what this minecart will do is it's going to swing by these mining rigs. And once these mining rigs have two units of content, they're going to dump it into the minecart. And then the minecart is going to bring it over to the container. And then the container is going to send it to the crate maker. And then the crate maker will make crates for export. So here we go. You can see it in action. Uh, in a moment, we just need to make one more cycle. It dumps material in. Each minecart can hold up to four units of material. And you can upgrade how fast your minecarts move around the map. And then those materials get sent to the container. Now the container's not filling up because immediately the crate maker has the volume to, um, to process the ore. But I like to add in the container because there is no monthly cost to a container. And it helps to deal with, um, you know, it, it's a nice buffer, I guess. And as you can see there, it just buffered. If I didn't have a container, this minecart would still have one unit of ore left in it and therefore not be able to pick up. Once you have a minecart with any amount of material in it, you can't add additional material. So for instance, this minecart right here is half full. When it travels over to this mining rig, it's not going to put two more units into the half full cart. It's going to put two units into the empty cart. So it's important to try to buffer as much material as you can. So the next bottleneck I would say in this setup is the distance between the road here, the road entry or the pit stop and where I'm trying to sell the stuff. So I'm going to actually redesign this, um, this little system so that my, uh, my drones are right next to the pit stop. And that way they are able to load a truck much more quickly. So if I redesign the roads like this, it doesn't add a whole lot of extra distance to the road, but the distance between the unload station and the pit stop is very, very close to one another which will allow me to export resources much, much more quickly once trucks arrive. Another thing you can do to add throughput is to add another pit stop, but I can't afford that quite yet. But I can now, I just made some more money. So if we want another pit stop, uh, I'd have to decide maybe to put it like here. And I'm gonna pause the game again. Actually, we can unpause it because uh, this truck will load up. This pit stop I'm going to set on medium priority, and this one on high priority. So we have one pit stop that we prioritize over the other, and that way um, we are trying to load up the closer one because we are going to be able to get the closer one full first, and the further one um, is a little bit further from the unload station. Now I'd also be able to make the unload station a little bit longer, but unload stations are very expensive. They don't have a monthly cost, but um, a lot of my wealth is tied up in them. So here, as you can see, because I don't have a lot of trucks to load and unload, I am generating a whole lot of coal ore. I, my surplus is building up a lot.
But here we are going to be able to use the second pit stop. This truck's coming in and this will, truck will be able to make a pit stop here. If I didn't have the second pit stop, this truck would have passed me by and I would not have been able to load resources onto it. Now, the next building I need to build is a research station. So I'm going to redesign my uh, electrical network a little bit here. Let's see. There. That's a little cleaner. And now, as you can see, I have a lot more trucks going through the system. And I'm going to be able to pull more of the ore from my container and put it towards selling. I've just increased the amount of money I'll have by a lot, which is great. So what a research station does is a research station takes resources, um, any sort of resources that you want to put into it and researches it. And then it will um, create science for you. And then you can use that science to unlock upgrades and things of that nature. So what I have to do here, I'm going to pause real quick. I have to redesign my track system to accommodate this research station. So the research station is exactly like this um, container. What it needs to do is it needs to suck material up into it for it to process the material for research. And as you can see here, this is too tight of a, a turn. So I'm gonna put the research station, well, here, I'll design it like this. This will be a little easier. I'm gonna copy this over, build my three run track, and then I know exactly how the research station is gonna to have to be laid out. It's gonna to have to be laid out like that, perfect. So then the three run track and then this will then connect over there. I have insufficient funds, so let's unpause. There we go. I just made a little bit more money because we just exported some stuff. So here's my new loop. And I'm going to reverse the course of my minecart. And now, as you can see, the materials have gone into the research station, the research bay, instead of going into the container here. So as long as this container has a nice surplus of material, what I'm going to do is run my train tracks in reverse, which prioritizes my research bay to get materials over my container. And as soon as this container's uh, surplus whittles down, I can then reverse the tracks again and um, we'll be prioritizing the uh, crates over the research. So the way research works is research will grind through the materials you put into it. It can store up to eight contents at a time and it's processing these materials into research and it processes them at market value. So as you can see, I've processed two coal ore at 2,300, which means the market value is half that. I'm making about uh, 1,144 research per coal ore researched. And the market values change often, but generally speaking, ash is always going to be the worst. Same with grass and red grass, and then capacitors are going to be the best. Uh, keep an eye on the demand bonus because the, uh, the things that you put into your research bay is directly linked to the demand bonus. So, you know, essentially uh, three coal ore is about the same research as one capacitor. You can't actually claim your research to use it until you hit this threshold here, which is 20. So once you hit a 20 unit threshold, you can claim your research uh, and then you're able to use your research Research is used to both upgrade and unlock. So the upgrades are something like this, where we can make um, mine carts speed up, we can have trucks come more often, we can make drones move faster, or unlocks. Like unlocking the refiner in the factory, 
or the step conveyor. Now, I would highly advise you to work towards unlocks and not upgrades. Now, some upgrades are nice. I would say some initial truck interval upgrades can actually go a long way. Same with maybe some drone up speed upgrades. Um, but for the most part, you're going to be wanting to work towards unlocks because unlocking allows you to make a lot more money and export a lot more uh, volume. Now, the uh, unlocks I would say you want to initially work towards is refining, step conveyor, claw train, crate gate, and claw track truck loader, which dramatically changes the way you're going to be able to do um, uh, truck loading. It is uh, awesome. So as you can see, the um, this container here is... Uh, its contents has gone down from 26 to 17. But now the research station that I've got here is almost so full of contents that um, that it's not really accepting more material. And as you can see here, this mining rig is 0 out of 10. This is 0 out of 10. This is soon to be 0 out of 10. It means I'm using every last ounce of ore and I'm putting it to good use, which is really, really important. We've, we've created a... A nice system here that is fairly efficient. Now the next big thing to boost me up, I would say, is the science required to get the refiner. That's going to be very, very important. And I'm going to get that uh, basically when I hit the 20 research mark here. I will get my refiner. Another thing I have to think about is I don't have... So the way to add additional highways, they have to be, you have to add highways in within, as you can see, this dotted box, within the dotted box of the last entry. If you have no entries, you can move your entry, road entry point anywhere you want. And the same is true of a research bay. If I wanted to add another research bay, I have to add it within the radius of the last research bay. And this way, um, in some ways, your entire system is... Uh, restricted by how efficiently you lay everything out. And as you can see, a road entry here is really a bad idea. This was just temporary so that I could speed this process up. But it's a bad idea because um, I can't really build on the left side of here. I'd have to build on the right side. But if I build on the right side, I really only have access to the resources on the right side of my road because this road intersects or bisects my, um, my whole island here. And there's lots of gold, coal, iron over over this section, which is going to be um, really, you know, really necessary for me to grab. Um, you can transfer materials around using minecarts and the like and claw trains. But for the most part, you want to make it so that you your road entry isn't messing up your whole um, sort of system here. I'm going to add one more drone because I can afford it. All right, so at this point, I'm just sort of waiting for the research unlock to click in. And I've decided that uh, this iron is going to be what I want to get. So if you take a look at uh, the crate gate here, the crate gate requires you to process processed iron in the research. And the claw track requires you to process processed coal for research. So those are the first two I'm going to focus on because I would say the claw track truck loader and the crate, well, not so much the crate gate, but is the prerequisite to the um, claw track truck loader. Those will fundamentally change the way you, um, or how efficiently you can create uh, factories and how efficiently you can export material. Those are very, very important. So this map has some oil over here, has coal, iron, um, gold, a whole lot of gold. There's a whole mess of gold up in that corner. So now I am about to hit the 20 required mark for research at this research bay. So I'm going to claim it. And you can see my research bay turns green when it's ready to be claimed. Now I have 22,270 research. I can then go to the research unlocks and unlock refining. So what, ref <clears throat> excuse me, what refining allows you to do is it allows you to build factories. And factories, inside of a factory, you can process materials 
um, to make them more valuable, essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a very basic uh, iron factory now. But I'm going to let, as, as this system here generates me a lot of money, I might as well let it run in the background while I set up a new factory. And as long as I don't power up the factory and I'm just laying it out, I don't have to spend the monthly uh, the monthly dollars to keep the factory running. So essentially what this will be is we're going to have three mining rigs that mine up iron ore. I need to figure out how I want to interconnect these mining rigs. Basically what kind of loop I want. Generally I'm of the mind that the simpler is better. And then I need to pick um, sort of the layout of the factory here. So uh, one thing I could do is to set up a factory like this. Once you've laid out a factory here, um, you, you can't really redesign its floor print all that easily. And I just want to make that very clear. Uh, once you have the footprint of a factory, you're sort of stuck with it, as far as I can tell. And I want the tracks of my loop to run into the factory. So I'm bringing material into the factory. Um, it occurs to me that uh, this connection here won't work all that well. So I'm going to just loop it around like this. The length of, the length of these, um, these runs are really not that long. Now, eventually, if I want to, let's say, tap into this oil here, I'm not really going to be able to import, export anything of this oil track because it's all surrounded by water. So what I'm going to need to do is to send everything over rail. Um, one thing is the higher up your track level is, like high um, elevated tracks, your minecarts run faster than low elevated tracks, but they're more expensive to build. So one section is 100, whereas one section... Oh, I guess it's still 100, but, um, you know, you, you, it, it, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can use the material because, um, if you take a look at the mining rigs, mining rigs only can load and unload at uh, base height. All right, so let's set up the material transfer tubes. And now we are in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a, um, oh, not there. I'm going to set up a transfer tube to pull material and put the material into this storage container. So this storage container is going to be filling up with raw ore, raw iron ore. So what we're going to want to do to the storage container here is to, um, create it into a crate maker and then for now the crate maker straight into a refiner now um eventually once i unlock the step conveyors i can add complexity here so initially i'm only going to have one mining rig because my mining rig is generates one iron ore every 11 seconds and that's roughly how fast the refiner runs uh, but once I'm able to hook up multiple refiners, which is not yet, uh, I'll be able to then have multiple mining rigs. There's just no point in having multiple mining rigs for now. Uh, and then what I'm going to do here is to export this good. So what I, then I'm going to add unload stations, have them on a high priority, and like stick a door here. Which means I'm going to need to run a highway by this. To make work of it right so that means i'm going to need to redesign this system a little bit because um because i don't really have the ability to add a new highway here so i'm gonna have two entries over here one and two actually i can move them a little bit more i could have an entry here and here. 
So this entry here is going to run a road over to this factory. And I'm just going to move the uh, train tracks a little bit so that it doesn't uh, interrupt the road so that the road can run freely over there. Hmm. Seems like it is maybe too close anyway. All right, let me fix that. So we'll have it come in here. You don't necessarily need a loop. I uh, just want to point that out. So as this track clearly is not looped anymore, um, you know, it doesn't require a loop. I like loops, but I can just add two more units here for the minecart to be able to pick up whatever material I'm sending. And then I can actually remove some of this track here because it's no longer required. So this will just go back and forth, back and forth. And this is not an ideal design. It's just the very basic design that I've got going on now. All right. So the material is coming out that area there. So what I'll do is I'll put two tracks here, one on high, one on medium. And we are going to load up uh, processed iron in there. And then I can have this exit anywhere I want. Unlike the entries, the exits can be uh, really in any cliffside. I just right at this moment, I can't afford um, the price of an exit. But as soon as these two trucks uh, exit, I'll be able to afford it. Well, one thing I should do is I should um, set up my original loop for the raw coal to be able to keep operating. I don't want to sever that. Um, That might be too small of an entry. Yep. Ton of, ton of teeny tweaks. <laughs> now, as you can see, it's not, uh, I can't get as close as I was previously to uh, export this stuff. So it's going to be a little less efficient, but I'm adding a whole iron processor here. So that boosts the efficiency back up. Or not the efficiency, but it boosts the amount of resources and wealth I'll be generating back up. And I'm not going to be generating... Um, there we go. I have the ability to afford a road exit. See, I'm strapped on money. So what I'll do, because I'm strapped on money, is um, break down one of these pit stops, which I can add in later, just to save me some cash and have this be the only pit stop for now, just so that we start making money from this. So now we have a closed loop here. And I'm going to set up power so that we can power it on. But I'm waiting for... That's funny. I'm waiting for $90 for a power pole. I also need to add a minecart, so it's not just $90. But now, as you can see, we're starting to pull trucks in, and the truck is going to make a pit stop here. Uh, once a, a truck does have a maximum amount of idle time, so at some point, trucks will just leave, whether they've been full or not. Now, my next unlock here is for a step conveyor at 45,000 research. So I'm really not gonna, I don't really need to claim anything here until I hit the 45,000 mark. It it won't benefit me really at all until I hit that, uh, hit that mark. So at this point, I'm just waiting for these trucks to go and sell their goods. So I've powered this on. But because I can't afford it, I'm actually going to destroy it. Because until I can afford a minecart... Oh, no, you guys. 
Uh, this pit stop, I'm going to only allow iron because these drones are carrying coal over to sell to this pit stop, which is wrong. I don't want coal to be sold over here. All right, so I can now afford uh, a minecart. And now I will power it back on. Now, another thing I'm going to need to uh, afford soon is a another drone bay so that we can operate um, we can operate both factories this is not really a factory but both uh, process flows for four drones over here four drones over here now what I can say about drones is they're a little dumb and they don't really know where to go often so what you need to do eventually is unlock uh, the claw track truck loaders because their their AI is a lot less frustrating. I'll just put it like that. So at some point, oh here you go. Now as you can see, I've got some processed iron here to be sold, and we have one drone traveling from up here over to pick this up. Now if you look at the kilogram rates here. Uh, iron ore is only worth one kilogram per crate sold, but processed iron is worth 10 kilograms. So one crate of this processed iron is worth more weight-wise than a truckload of raw coal. So it is definitely worth refining material. Oh, hold on. You guys are doing it again. I'm going to make sure that um, this drone here... Stop. I want uh, only to sell coal up here, so I've set up these pit stops to only allow coal ore, because that's, well, I can add coal too, but only allow coal and coal ore, and down here only iron and iron ore. Now once I hit uh, $10,000, uh, I can buy another drone bay, and I have plenty of power capacity to be able to fund that. Looks to me like my um, my storage here is full, which means I've been inefficiently selling this iron, and it got backed up. It got real backed up. And that's because now that we have two places that I sell stuff, uh, these drones spend a lot of time traveling between the two, as you can see, and that makes it uh, a lot less efficient. Which is kind of rough because right now I'm I'm just uh, I can even make this uh, I'll leave this medium priority for now. Now you can't directly issue orders to drones. What you could do is blow one up, but because I was in debt, I can't replace it just yet. I have to wait for for like this truck to exit. But if you ever have drones that are like way off in the middle of nowhere, uh, you get full refunds destroying things. So yeah, it's, it, it actually sometimes is a nice choice. Like, oh look, you know, this drone is really not where it's supposed to be. Uh, let me just blow that one up and we'll put it where it belongs. So like this drone here is now holding a crate of iron and I either can destroy the crate of iron or have him just sit here waiting to sell it but i'm about to make as soon as this truck exits i'll have enough for a second drone bay um which will allow me to have four more drones i'll obviously have to afford the four additional drones but that will allow me to load these trucks up a lot more efficiently because i've been doing it um somewhat slowly lately okay we're creeping up to the forty-five thousand required for the step conveyor and as soon as I get the step conveyor I'll be able to process a lot more iron here so the reason being is um, the refining must take a crate it can't take raw materials so that means that um, the refiner only works processing one iron every 11 seconds which is the same rate that I mine it up um, this crate maker I currently don't have the technology to have this crate maker send its um, 
created iron ore to three different uh, refiners, which is why um, I have only one mining rig and one refiner. But I have enough for another drone bay. So let me build another drone bay. And I'm going to spend all of my money buying four drones. I'm blowing up these drones because they are frustratingly in the wrong spots. All right, so this should be high priority. That's why they keep traveling upwards. There we go. No, stop transferring between the two. Yeah, this is... Uh, if I processed... Another way to avoid this frustration is to train car um, this coal down here or train car this iron down up there. Uh, that is maybe something I should have done just to avoid these long drone travel times. But redesigning my entire coal, coal flow is something I want to do soon because selling raw coal doesn't add a lot of kilogram weight to my export. Uh, so I want to start refining this coal as well. Uh, but I'd like to refine this coal when I have a step conveyor because I can make it a lot more efficient with a step conveyor. So that's what I'm sort of waiting on is the 45,000 research points. And one more coal processed, I'll hit that number, and then I'll be able to make a much more efficient um, factory. There we go. So the way these step conveyors work is like this. I'm going to blow this up. So now I can send, well, I didn't really need to blow up the crate maker. But now I can send the crates that come out of the crate maker of the raw ore to multiple refineries. So let's lay them out. One, two, three refineries. And the way this works is we'll have the step conveyor send material like, like this, and then a transfer claw to grab material from the crate makers over to these individual refineries, and then we can have unload stations um, on each of these refineries, meaning that our throughput is a lot higher. So what I'm gonna do is actually uh, destroy my original coal loop. I know it's a lot of invested uh, resource because this, I can, what I can do is I can let the, um, no, actually I'm going to destroy the research too. I'm going to let these trucks that have goods on them exit. But now all of my, all of my uh, drones should come down here and we'll be exporting iron. Instead of uh, coal. So I added another pit stop. I'm gonna add some ado additional doors here. And I'm going to add the additional mines themselves. Power them up to one another. And now we have a relatively efficient um, mining processing um, flow. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is now that this track is done, delete it, and then I'm going to change the flow of this highway a little bit just so that it's a little bit more efficient. So I'm actually going to have it run in reverse, I think. Oops, I did not mean to do that. 
So the input, the entry, I'm going to have be over here. And I'm not gonna break these down until they're done. So I'm gonna have them enter and exit. And that allows me to put another entry over here like this to harness gold or coal over there. This is a, I like this sort of layout a lot, a little bit better. I'm going to add some minecarts here so that we can transfer more material. Now, another thing is for me to gain the claw train or for me to gain the crate gate research, I'm going to need to start um, processing. Or I'm going to need to start exporting the processed uh, iron into a um, into a research station. Um, and that's going to be a little bit more involved. I don't think this factory is actually big enough to accommodate that unless I change the layout, truth be told. So I might have to redesign this entire factory. So I'm going to pause a second and do just that. I know it seems crazy, but um, I now have a, a different amount of demand. So I'm going to delete all the drones that are in my way. You get refunded 100%, so it's, it's, it's costly, but it's not terrible. All right, making the factory slightly larger. Oh, I actually don't want to lay it out like that. There we go. Larger factory. Create the completed flow track. Still, we're going to put materials into storage. And then this will flow into a crate maker. And then off of the crate maker, we'll still have the, um, the various refiners. So let's do, um, one, two, and three. A little different layout here. Oh, this needs to be a little tighter. So step conveyors like this. Transfer claws. Like that. And now we have an unload station here. which is, can be our high priority iron export. And then we are also going to have, I'm gonna have a step conveyor here, and then an unload station over here for another door in the factory that sells some additional um, iron over here. So I'm trying to keep the iron close to the, to the export area. Let's complete the highway. And I'm going to unpause it. So now uh, what we need to do to export our iron is something like this. I can add a, uh, a transfer tube to then put the processed iron into storage here and then have another transfer tube to put it into a minecart. Complicated, yes I know, but required what I want to do. So now we have the ability to store processed iron in this crate, in this uh, storage here, and then this mine track will go over the highway and deposit it into a research station. So we will start to research processed iron instead 
of the um, instead of raw iron uh, coal ore. So it's going to be worth more research-wise, and then also it will work towards unlocking the claw claw gate. I just need to run power. and add one minecar. And then I'm also going to tell this um, transfer tube to skip every two uh, crates so that not all the crates that get sent through here end up in the storage here. Some end up on the conveyor belt, allowing us to sell it. Uh, now I'm going to add in my drones so I can actually start loading up the, um, the trucks. I'm also going to, yep, there we go. So now we are selling processed iron and researching processed iron. So as you can see, we are researching processed iron over here. And once I have 25 iron to research, uh, I have will fulfill this research uh, prerequisite. So that's all the time I have for this episode, guys. I hope it has been helpful to you. If you have any uh, questions for me, or if you have things that you'd like me to cover or explain more thoroughly, just drop me a line in comments. I'm absolutely happy to respond. Hope you uh, tune in next time for some additional Automation Empire. Thanks for watching. Adios.